Hello, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Make Code Arcade Advanced Stream. I'm Richard Average on the Make Code Forum. I'm Joe at J Wonderl on the Make Code Forum. And um, thank you, everybody, who joined us on Friday for the. Oh, Q Phoenix has quoted me in chat, just predicted what I was going to say. Um, I, I think we I, have a time traveler. That's kind of messed up. Yep. Um, thank you, everybody, who tuned in for our mini game jam stream on Friday. The new mini game jam is up in the forum. So you can go ahead and check that out now. The theme is Halloween. And as I mentioned before, we're going to start intermixing the regular mini game jams with ones that are chosen by community members. And Q Phoenix, I'm glad you're in the chat. I, I'm pretty sure you already know this, but you're going to be choosing the theme for the next one. So think up a theme. OK, I will message you on the forum when it's time and then I'll, I'll do the posting, but you can come up with a theme. So come up with some fun. All right. Also, hello, vertical boosts. Um, so today we are back working on our bug president game. Switch on over. Um, so uh, this is our Pikmin like game, and um, I did a little bit prior to the stream, just barely anything. You'll see it pretty quick. So the results screen, we're supposed to have a bug emperor right on the right. The bug emperor. Kind of. I know this looks incredibly goofy, but um, yeah, at least there's something there now. So. Yeah, are, are we going to get the. the... Who, who can say? Okay. All right. Anyway, ignoring that, um, let's go back to the actual um, thing we're working on today. We are still working on our enemies. So um, where we left off last time, we have our enemy over here. Where are you and me? There you go. We're walking around. Um, he's got his little cone of vision where he can see us. And um, if you remember, he has a fire attack. So I can just trigger right now by pressing B. There you go. You see a little fire attack coming out. And so um, where we ended up on uh, Thursday when we were, I'm sorry, Wednesday when we were last working on this was we had just done bugs on fire behavior. So um, currently I can set them on fire just for testing. So there they go. They're all running around in panic. Yeah. Um, so if you haven't played Pikmin before, what happens when you get uh, set on fire, when a Pikmin gets set on fire is they just run around in panic like this. Um, and then when you call them, they like, the, the flame goes away and then they run back over to you. I right? guess your call is just immediately yelling out stop, drop, and roll in a small cone until they figure it out. Pretty much. Um, so we need to do that behavior now. So, um, well, actually, first we should probably do it so that the enemy can actually set them on fire. So let's do that first. And then we will do the call and collect thing and also the dying of the bugs because they will, you know, possibly get eaten. Also, hi, ham993. All right. OK, <clears throat> so uh, to do this, we are going to go back over to our gigantic enemy AI function. Where are you, enemy AI function? Doop, doop, doop. And that's not this. Collapse box, format code, look for. Um, Let's see, should turn clockwise, convert angle, make breathe fire, position number, add enemy AI. That's what I want. So this is big enemy AI function that we have. Um, so this second half of the function is when they are targeting someone. And um, what we currently have them doing is they will move forward for 500 milliseconds. Then they will turn towards their target and they'll just keep moving forward. So we're just moving between those two states. So we need to trigger an, an actual attack now. So right now the, the attack just automatically gets triggered when I press P, all right? Um, which we, you know, that's not how we actually wanted to do. Um, so we want to make it so that they trigger the attack. Um, and to do that, we need to probably detect when the, our target is in range. Right. So, um, probably make it so that just like if we are facing them and they're within a certain distance, that's like good to attack. That seems reasonable, yeah. Yeah. And um, I'm thinking right now they'll keep moving while they attack, but we can decide whether or not we want to like that behavior later. Yeah, I mean, um, definitely can decide. Maybe uh, if they stop moving, maybe you can actually use that to get away. If you are a cruel, cruel bug, you just throw one, they attack, and then you get away from them. True. Is The question is, is it too 
Yeah, maybe they maybe they should stop moving. Um, actually, that's that's not a bad idea. OK, so um, what we're going to do here is we have our state that we're moving around. Um, we're going to put an if at the end here. Um, and. We are going to check our condition for. If we are facing them and if they are within a certain radius. So um, to do that, uh, we're going to go ahead and um, just use let's just do radius for now. So we're going to grab this distance between um, for the first one. We want it to be our target. So um, let's just grab this data target like that. And then for the second one, we want it to be our sprite. So just stick them right there. Hey, get in there. Brah. I think this has to go on my list of things I'm definitely fixing before the next arcade release. I know it's intentional behavior, but it is annoying intentional behavior. Mm. All right. So what would you say the range of our attack is right now? Just eyeballing it. it again? Yeah, let's go over here. Twenty four. Yeah, some six somewhere between 16 and 24, I think. Uh, so let's do 24. We're going to say if we're less than 24, then we are just going to immediately um, set our uh, state to attacking. Like that. And um, we are also going to put in a timer for this. So we want to make sure that we don't just keep attacking continuously. But there's going to be a cooldown, you know? Mm -hmm. um, you don't want to so, overeat your lungs when you're breathing fire. Exactly, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> Ham says, hey, Richard, look, I'm looking at you. Um, yes, it, it, it appears there are two adorable Ham Taro style hamsters writing in a notepad, which is very cute. Taking notes. Um, OK, so um, is Hamtaro still a thing? I mean, it's on the Internet, so it's still. Technically a thing. Hmm. All right, well, anyway. Um, Hamtaro, if you didn't know, is a there was a period, I would say, in the. Um, like early 2000s when um, a lot of the cartoon networks in the US were, or spe specifically Cartoon Network, was taking Japanese anime and just importing them with subtitles. Hmm. Well, 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 I'm sorry. I guess them the and final and episode them. aired in 2006, so it might not be a thing to speak of anymore. Um, but yes, yeah, so they, they imported Hamtaro and just like, you know. Yeah, there's a 2011 game. Hmm. All right. So anyway. Uh, if the distance is less than 24, we are going to set our state to be attacking and we're going to go ahead and call our function. Where are you? Do, do, do. Got to zoom in function. Let's see, I think it's called like make sprite attack. Make breathe fire. Here we go. Um, and we're going to pass it on our Sprite. This is the wrong if statement. There we go. Right there. Um, and we're going to store a number here, which is going to be our last attack time. And we're going to use this uh, for our cooldown. So set data to number this right here. Um, and we're going to set this to be last attack time. And we're going to just set this to um, our time since start. Now we're going to put an else if in here, um, and we're going to change do the um, attacking state. And uh, what we're going to do here, oh, we also need to set moving forward false. So let's do that right now. OK, so if our state equals attacking, then all we're going to do is wait until our time has passed. And then uh, go into one of these other two states. 
So let's grab our time. There you go. Grab this and we're going to put a I don't I don't remember how long an attack works. Let's right click on this function. Do go to definition. And the breath time, I'm storing it actually on the sprite, so. <clears throat> we can just use that, I guess. So it's three seconds. We want it to. Um, so stop moving for the three seconds while it's breathing fire. And then we want it to wait till the next attack, but for more than three seconds, like five seconds or something. Give you like a two second breather. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's do that. We're going to. Um, where was I? Here we go. So if our time since start minus state change time is greater than 3000, actually, we're going to make them breathe fire and they're just going to hang out for a second. So let's do 3500. So they'll hang out for 500 milliseconds and then start moving again. Yeah, they had to watch the chaos that they caused. <laughs> yes. Um, then we're going to go ahead and set their state to um, probably not moving forward. We'll probably set it to turning. Like that. Perfect. Um, and uh, right here now we need to do our cooldown. So we're going to put an and here. So this is our distance check, but we also need to check our. Um, time minus our last attack time. So if our time minus our last attack time is greater than 5,000, <laughs> so five seconds, then we will attack. OK, now um, let's see. The last thing we need to do here is um, this is always going to return false because um, we are not setting our initial value for our last attack time. So it's going to return undefined. If I remember how Sprite data works correctly. Um, and uh, if that if we are uh, if it is undefined, then comparisons between it and numbers are just always going to return false. Same thing with not a number. That's how it works. Um, a comparison with not a number, even if it's equals, always returns false. Um, so uh, what we're going to do instead is um, just set our last attack time to be zero when we create this sprite. Attack time to zero. And there we go. Joe, are you checking to see if that's how the spike data extension works? No, I was uh, refreshing my mind on if there was any weird edge cases for uh, comparisons, but no, it, it is always false. Yeah. All right, let's try it out. Come on, look at me. Woo, attack. He stopped moving. Now he's moving again. Coming over here and attack. Coming over here, coming after me. Attack. Yeah, all right. that's pretty much exactly what we wanted. All right, so now that we have them actually using fire, uh, we're going to need two things. One, we're going to turn off our little debug view here. Do, do, do. Where are you? Kona Vision. I think it's like render on Z, Z index negative 0.5. Yeah, here we go. There's our little cone of vision. Goodbye. We don't need any more. We know that works. Um, and we're going to go to our uh, on B button pressed. Or is it on B button released? Yeah, OK, so we have this make breathe fire on temp enemy. Get rid of that. We don't want that. There we go. And uh, lastly, we're going to go to our calling bugs, if calling bugs code. And ooh, I really wish I hadn't deleted everything that was in here. Do I still have it somewhere? Here it is. All right, I think this is it. Get rid of that. Put that back in there. And uh, let us make sure that that still works. We're going to go ahead and yeah, OK. 
It appears to be working correctly. So cool, we didn't break that code. All right. Now the last thing we have to do before we can really test this out is we have to make we have to do the overlaps code with our fire. So we need to do our overlaps um, when uh, it overlaps with bug president and also when it overlaps with all the different bug kinds. Right, and actually, did we already do that? We might have already done that actually. On Sprite of Kind, fire overlaps all the bugs. Yes, we already did that. But we still need to do it for when it overlaps with bug president specifically. So here, we can test this out right now. Let's get this guy to follow us. Can you follow me? All right, it's coming after me. Now I'm going to stand right here and get him to breathe fire at me. And there we go. He set those guys on fire. Beautiful. Wow, my butt, my babies. OK, <laughs> they're not. They are not bug presidents as children. Um, so. That um, is working. Uh, let's go ahead now and do it when the fire overlaps with bug president um, himself. So I'm going to copy one of these fire overlaps. Can we do the Super Mario 64 uh, fire effect? You lose control for just a second, and then but then you go super speed, and you have to direct it. Hmm. Like it, it, it keeps going forward. Like you're locked forward until you uh, a second has passed. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Um, but first thing we want to do is we want to make it so that you lose some bugs and they all start running on fire. But yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't dislike that idea. Um. All right. So uh, we're going to I just duplicated this, right? There's a grayed out one up here somewhere. No, I just pulled it out. So OK, duplicate. There we go. Collapse. Go back to your home. All right, so we're going to change this um, to fire and kind player. Like that. And um. What we're going to do is. Um, do I already have a temp number? I might code a new 3D engine that supports yeah, full go. scenes and is optimized for sim. Is there a cheaper approximation for sine and cosine, or is the code for those already very efficient? It pretty much just calls cosine and sine already. There might be one level of indirection. It's extremely it, efficient. It's as efficient as it's get. If, yeah. if, if, unless you're talking about hardware, yeah, you said optimize for sim. Uh, it's extremely efficient. Any optimization you do is going to be slower than actually using sine and cosine. All right. Um, so I haven't tested that, but I'm pretty sure. Um, <clears throat> OK, so on Sprite of Kind Fire overlaps other Sprite of Kind player. We're going to go ahead and um, uh, set our temp number to be. the min of, and now I need to remember what variables we have for like, okay, we have this HUD bug count. Is that a sprite or is that the actual count is the question. Right, I feel like, let's see, round following bugs, this is what I want. So we want the minimum of round following bugs and um, I don't know, five arbitrarily chosen. Mm -hmm. um, so this is going to be the number of bugs that we lose. Um, and the reason we do this min is because we might have less than five bugs with us. So this is going to return, you know, however many we have. Um, so uh, we're then going to change our round following bugs by uh, zero minus whatever our tip number is. Like that. So it's going to get rid of our bugs. 
Now we need to spawn five bugs and set them all on fire. Okay, I'm gonna just use a repeat for this. So repeat, temp number of times. <clears throat> We're going to go ahead and create a bug. Did I make a function for creating a bug? I should be able to see this. Let's see. Assign bug, make brief fire, make time, upgrade to turn wall on, get wall sprite for tile, make bug presence, set bug on fire, search for target, angle diff, make random pass, start round, assign that, get bugs assigned, on throw end bug. I don't think I did. So where am I creating those bugs so I can just copy some code? Here we go. Yep. So I'm going to grab this. Going to create these things and we are going to set them on fire. Perfect. And we need to make their position the same as Bug President's position. So, okay. That should do it. Let's go get attacked. Yeah, my pretties. Um, OK, so that all worked, but our HUD did not update. We need to call um, update HUD to make sure that our HUD actually updates. All right, beautiful. Um, I think that does that. Okay, so let's do the other thing we were talking about. Um, so, uh, Joey, what happens when Mario gets on lava? Um, so, uh, on lava or on fire? On fire. So, on on lava, he bounce. He he bounce. On fire, he the same thing. Though. He, he does, does a small thing. bounce. He does like a like a one height bounce instead of like a a high jump bounce. And then he starts running, and you can control the direction after just a moment, but you have to keep going forward. And um, I think this is pretty important. Um, what sound does he make? What? Something like that. I don't know. I'm pretty bad at it. It's like, I, I don't want to. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. He goes on for a uh, while. I can't do it either. Yeah, it's, it's really hard. I, 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 yeah. Wow. Yeah, there we go. I got a perfect impression in chat. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So what you're suggesting that we do is we are going to set our bug president on fire and we're going to lock them to moving forward. Mm -hmm. um, and we are going to have them turn, be able to turn, but they can't stop moving. And maybe we'll up their movement speed also. So um, we're going to go into the bug president extension, and we have this set controls enabled, set controls um, false, and we have this set moving forward. So I actually don't know how these interact. I don't remember. Um, so let's just set bug president moving forward true and see what happens with the controls when we have that set on. I think it should, I think this should work fine. There you go. Okay, cool. Yeah, so I can still move. Um, but, and also, did I have that many bugs? Oh, I must have picked, I must have picked up a few as I walked over. Okay, perfect. Ham did send the yeah, video with the uh, exact recitation. It's, ah, ha, 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 ah, ha, 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 ha. 
Um, all right, so we're moving forward. That's good. We need to indicate that we're on fire. So probably put some flame effects on here somewhere, some sort of flame effect. And um, we need also to uh, uh, up our movement speed for a little bit while this happens. Um, so we're going to use the timer extension for this. And you're going to do it for two seconds. I don't know if that's too long. I don't know if that's too short. Um, and we're going to, uh, I don't know what our movement speed is. I don't even know if we're actually setting it. Um, so let's go to our create bug president function, make bug president. Go. Yeah, we're not setting it. Um, so. I want it to be the same as whatever it currently is. Uh, so I'm just going to do something dumb right now. Say your current speed? No, I'm just going to set it into a sprite data property and then get it back. OK. Oh wait, I, there's no getter. Ah, oh, I forgot there's no getter. Okay, so we have to set it to something. Um, okay, so uh, just start walking right and we can guesstimate it. Yeah? Yeah. Really? Now we're just gonna go with the extension. Okay, I'm guessing 35. Pretty good guess. Let's see. Do, do, do head on over to custom.ts. Speed is 30. But no tomato. Yep, not quite right. Okay. So we're going to up our speed to, um, I don't know, we'll try out some values. Head back over to our code. Wait for it to load, it takes a little bit because I'm streaming. He Phoenix says, LOL, I had Mario Kart Super Circuit Shy Guy Beach music on while playing this video. Did you ever play Mario Kart Super Circuit? I have a copy of it. Which one is that one? That's, is that SNES? I think that's Game Boy Advance. Game Boy Advance. It is. That's the one with the cool cover. No, I never played that one. Yeah, I um, I got a copy of it because I was buying a Game Boy Advance Micro on eBay, oh. and they threw it in. And I was like, OK, I guess I could play this. Bye. OK, well, nice to see you, Ham. See you. Have a good time with whatever you're doing. Yeah, see you later. Thanks for showing up. Uh, yeah, I never got a, a micro. Nano? Micro. Micro. Yeah, that, that feels about right. And we might actually increase the time by a little bit. Um, Let's do for three seconds. Mm -hmm. All right. Now we need to display that we are on fire. So there's two ways we could do this. I guess let's first start with the obvious way. Oh, no, the obvious way actually isn't easy. So the obvious way would be to just start a fire effect. Um, but we, don't, it's, we didn't match up the colors. No, we did match up the colors, but the fire effect does not work on bug president because of how bug president is implemented. Oh. Um, so we might just do the more difficult way, um, but that might be a better effect anyway. Um, I was thinking we just do some fire, like little fire circles on his behind. OK, I like it. Um, so to do that, we're going to use Sprite Utils. I'm going to do a render on the index. Think, uh, do you think bugs take offense to behind? Because it's like. 
A bee is just one type of bug. No, I think they make that joke all the time. Okay. Okay, I do not remember what bug president's Z index is, so we're just going to guess one. Um, and uh, we need to also store that bug president is on fire. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. We're going to go into sprites. We're going to um, go down here to Boolean, set a Boolean on bug president. On fire, you know, on fire. Set it to true, duplicate right here, set it to false. All right, all right, all right. Um, really what I want to do is actually, is this a good opportunity to use that extension that a forum member made? Wait, I don't remember which one you'd be referring to. Uh, the custom effects extension. Oh, maybe. Be good. Let's go look at it. I actually have not used it yet, so this might be a bad idea. Nope, this is not it. Extra effects extension, maybe? Yeah, here we go. Why did somebody like seven of my posts in a row this morning? So what this basically does is creates a bunch of circles. You see? Um, I haven't used it, though. So we're going to go ahead and copy this. And we're going to go into a new project. And we'll see if this is effective for us. So go to Home, New Project, Create, Add this. Go, go to effects. All right, so we have this effect fire spark. We have this my sprite start effect fire spark for 100 milliseconds. We're going to set my sprite to be. Well, you know what? Let's just add bug president to this. Why not? Since we're testing. So we're going to create both the president right here. And um, we're going to go ahead and do set moving forward true. And we're going to set their speed to be 50, which is, I believe, what we did for the um, on fire speed. And let's set this to be three seconds. And we'll put it inside of an audio A button press so that we can just trigger it. Hmm. It's not exactly what I want. Let's go into our effects and see what we can do to um, customize this. All right. Initial speed, overtime spread, duration. All right, here's what we're going to do. We're going to um, grab this spark effect, and we're going to try changing the values on this. So I'm going to set my effect to be this, and we're going to spawn my effect right here. We're going to go into an on game update. And we are going to um, set our extra spawn VX and extra spawn VY. <laughs> or, or do we actually have an angle? Let's see. Decelerate max min, max min, max min, Z. They have a spread percent, I guess. Um, spread percent, OK. OK, 
So what I want to do is make it so that these things are spawning behind us. Um, so the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to grab our facing direction. Like this, I'm going to add pi to it, which will make it so it's the opposite direction. Like that. Now I'm going to multiply it by cosine and sine. Well, I'm going to cosine sine it and then multiply whatever I want the VX to be. Um, so grab the. No, I always grab round when I mean square root. It's silly almost, I think, that square root is the default thing we have in there when I'm almost always looking for trig first. But whatever. Okay, make this sign. All right, and let's see if this works. Eh. You know, I can't, I honestly can't tell. Okay, let's make this 100 and 100 to make it really obvious. Yes, okay, it is working. It is spreading out behind us. Let's try and change the spread percent to be less. So we're going to set the max initial spread percent to be. Five. You know what? I can't tell if this is working or not. All right, we're going to do our own thing. It was a nice idea. Yeah. <laughs> I like those effects a lot. It's just not what we want for here. Yeah. We had a particular effects that we're going for. Wrong project. All right. Was the namespace Mr. President? Yes. Yeah, good. Um, OK. Um, so we're going to do something similar. So what that was doing was just creating a bunch of um, sprites that were then coming out behind us. And I think that is what we want, basically. So I'm thinking maybe instead of render on the index, I'm just going to go this way. Um, we are going to do this little um, fire thing. And we're actually going to do this inside of our create bug president. Where are you? Make bug president. There you go. Been a while since we did anything in this function. Um, I'm going to put in an on game update from our sprite utils inside here. There we go. Change this to be a bug president. Going to put in an if, and we're going to check that Boolean that we set. OK. If we are on fire, we are going to create a fire sprite um, behind us. All right. So for now, we're just going to make them all the same. We will make them um, circles. So um, let's make it five by five. Like that. Grab the kind, make it decoration. Going to give it a lifespan. Set that to be. Thousand, I don't know. And um, we're going to uh, place it. Uh, let's go to Sprite Utils and do place angle distance. And we're going to place it from our sprite. The angle is going to be our facing direction plus pi because we want it to go in the opposite direction. And we're just going to place it of where our butt is, basically. Mm -hmm. Let's see, I want Mr. President. Facing direction. And I want to add pi. By the way, 
you might see that I'm typing 3.14 instead of just using the pi block that exists inside of SpriteTils. That's because 3.14 is a pretty good approximation and we don't need the extra decimal points. Um, change this to tint, right? OK, so we're going to place it like five pixels back, and then we are now going to uh, not temp string, temp sprite. There we go. Uh, now we're going to go ahead and give it a velocity. So grab inside of sprite utils um, the set velocity at angle. We're going to set the velocity of our temp sprite, and we want it to be um, the same thing, but plus a random spread, basically. So we're going to grab this angle, do a plus, grab the uh, degrees to radians block inside of sprite utils because I can't think in terms of radians. There we go. And we're going to put a random range in here. So let's do pick random from negative 20 to 20. I don't know. And we will set the speed to be uh, 100. I don't know. And uh, to make this easier to test, I'm going to go ahead and not this. Ooh. All right, so let's change this to um, 50 milliseconds. Let's change the lifespan to be much less like. A hundred. Yeah, hundred. That's two less. Two hundred. Okay. Let's make it a random range, actually. And we're going to make this distance smaller. So we will do a pick random between um, 180 and 245, I guess. Um, there you go. Okay, we're on fire. Great. Let's slow the speed a bit. We're going to change this to 80. All right, cool. Uh, we're going to set this to auto destroy. So let's go to our um, inside of sprites, grab the set flag block. There we go. Set auto destroy on. Like that. Um, and we're going to have a bunch of things that we're choosing from. So we're going to go ahead and grab an array. Um, and we're going to make an array of images. So, nope, not remove head comment. No, stop it. What the heck? What the heck is happening? All right. right, because I can't duplicate that one because it's a chat block. Um, okay, we're going to make an array of images. Uh, so, let's go ahead and that five one is actually going to be our big one. So, let's uh, make a two by two and just do orange. I'm going to do another one but it's going to be yellow we're going to do another one it's going to be one by one it's going to be white and we're going to make this fire images set this right here arrays get random value from Fire images. Where are you, fire images? It's alphabetized. There you are. OK, let's look at this, see what this looks like. Do we like this? This look good? The, the, the big one is too big. Yeah, that's about it. Um. Should we change the or like 
add a little bit of randomness to the angle there or, or this position they're originating from in the back. So it's like a sure. Not just a cone of fire. Yeah. In fact, we're gonna go ahead and grab this exact same angle thing. Perfect. We'll see if that makes it too much. Maybe I have to combine them, but okay. And we're gonna set because we're setting these like a little bit back, we're actually gonna put our Z index above the Z index of bug resonant. Um, so we're going to set the temp sprite. Z. To be bug presidents Z plus one. All right. There you go. Um, and there you go. Hopefully, this isn't going to cause too much perf problems, but I am also going to do two of these. Nice. There you go. Okay. And we need to increase that. Change this to three, change this to negative 60 to 60. There we go. Now we're going to reduce the lifespan a little bit. Let's change this to 150 to 200, and we're going to reduce the speed. I'm going to make this 60. Okay, put the lifespan back up a little bit. Perfect. That looks pretty good, I think. Um, and just to confirm that it does follow us like that. Looks good. Maybe we should set the Z index to be lower. Let's let's see if it looks better below or above. Here it is below. No, I think it did actually look better above. Mm. All right, cool. There we go. Uh, let's go ahead and um, invert this again so that it actually is when we're on fire. That. And uh, let's go see what it looks like now when we're on fire. Whoa! All right, so that's nice. Um, last thing we need to do is uh, we need to actually make it so that we can grab these guys again. So um, we're going to uh, go to our calling bugs code. There you go. Class walks. Format code. What are you? Oh. Yeah, that was just a walk bug. OK. Go over to where we are doing our calling, which is inside of here. There we go. And um, inside of here, we are doing all sprites of kind bug, busy bug, thrown bug, whatever. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and do um, another one of these if statements, but it's going to be for on fire bug. And now for each of these guys, we're going to loop over them. We're going to toss this. Um, we're going to make them follow. We are going to stop all animations. Um, and we are going to set their image back to the not on fire image. 
Um, though what we might actually do, no, we will do this. I kind of want to, I kind of want to do a little animation, but just do this for now. Yeah. Yeah. Call my friends back. Um, also, we're doing the classic issue right now. Um, why is my HUD not getting updated? Oh, did I not? Um, did we not call the uh, right? No, I don't. I actually, I don't see why this should be. Oh, I didn't change the kind. Oh, there's like very sprites. Where are you set kind block? Here we go. Set the kind back to bug. <laughs> I got it. All right, cool. Um, so that should all be working now. Uh, one thing we need to do a uh, when we get set on fire, we need a uh, invincibility period because right now it's happening every frame, which is causing us to just lose all of our bugs. Hmm. Right, so you see all of our bugs run out. Yeah, which. Yeah, they're a little too effective at running away, so we can't do that. Um, because then there's a good a solid chance your bugs are going to die. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, so we need to have a cooldown. Um, let's see, class box format code. Why does this keep? Getting grayed out. I don't understand. Do we have I another? I don't think we do. OK, this is other sprite of kind thrown bug collapse. Collapse. Oh, yeah, we do. Get out of here. Interesting. OK. Um, so, uh, we need to put in a little bit of a cooldown. Uh, so we're going to go back over to our overlaps. So on Sprite of Kind, Fire, Overlaps Player. I think it's this one. There we go. Um, we are going to, and you know what? I'm also going to fix this real quick. Not use bug present, just use this Sprite instead. If we ever make this a multiplayer game. Wait, right. if, wait, uh, other, other sprite? Yep. Spray of kind of fire. Um, so we can do the, the dumb hacky way, which is just put a pause in here because we only run them once, but we should do the set the field on the sprite and. What? That wouldn't work. Huh? That wouldn't work. No, we start them in a background thread. We start them in the background thread, but we don't run the same overlap with the same uh, originating sprite again. Oh, really? Until, until it, the, yeah, we only run one instance of it at a time. Will they get queued? No. If oh. there's two, if there's two enemies with fire, though, it'll do, allow you to take two hits. So we should really do that. Yeah. Okay. So I was about to do that dumb thing because it sounded pretty good to me. Um, we're going to go ahead and do other sprite, uh, set data, uh, fire time, or on fire time to time since start. Are you game? There you go. Time since start. And right here, we're going to do a check. This also means that we need to set our on fire time to an initial value again. Ugh. So annoying. Getcha. 
make book president right here. Expand this. Bug present, we gotta set your sprite number. There we go. Okay. Collapse. Move over here. Grab this. Go right here. And we're going to say if logic math minus time since start minus our on fire time. is less than, is greater than two seconds. I don't know, just choose a number, put that in there. Beautiful, okay. Uh, oh, we need to move this right there. All right, cool. Well, that's gonna do it for us today. Thank you for tuning in, everybody. Remember, we have a mini game jam going on. You can find out more details about it on the forum. It is Halloween themed, it's gonna be really fun. And um, I we are coming in, on the end of this game, I think. Um, so we need to do a few more things to like actually make it so there's like a level select screen and stuff. But yeah. um, then we will have, and we'll probably do a level design stream or two. Um, and if it takes we'll... too long, we might end up having to put on a witch hat just because of how. True. Sure. Onto the yes. present. Possibly. Um, anyway, I am Richard Irish on the Make Code Form. <laughs> I'm Joey at J Wonderall on the Make Code Form. And uh, we will see you on Wednesday. Bye.